join Forum IES Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IES Rank 1, Anudeep Durisheti, Shruti Sharma, and Ishita Kishore. Hello everyone, welcome to Key Concepts in Anthropology. The next topic which I'm going to introduce you to today are certain basic principles of genetics. What do you understand by the term genetics or gene for that matter that acts to be uh, one of the central theme of what kind of uh, inheritance are we talking about when we talk about genetics here? So when, when we talk about genes, it's considered to be that particular functional unit which is inherited from one generation to another. And while that inheritance is happening from one generation to another, th there can be certain permutation and combinations in which the formation of genes is culminated together and which shows up in the phenotypic expression of a particular person. To understand the entire process, I'll take you through certain commonly used terminology in genetics so that you get an understanding of what genetics is all about, right? The first term is genome. You must have heard of the term human genome project, microbiome project, right? We keep on hearing these terms. So what is genome? When we talk about gene, that is one functional sequence, one functional nucleotide sequence which is existing inside every cell of your body. But what is a genome? All the genetic sequences in a cell, okay, together. So if I have to talk about the human genome, I'll talk about all the genetic sequences in a cell. So why I'm writing a cell? Because every cell in your body has the same genetic information. So if I get to codify all the genetic sequences of your body from a particular cell, that is called as a genome, right? And where, while I'm using the term sequences, I hope you have a background idea over here that there are certain nucleotide-based sequences in which the genes exist, okay? So for example, like this, A, T, G, C. Okay, you'll study more about this in uh, much more detail. The second term is phenotype. So there are two terms which are very widely used in genetics, phenotype and genotype. What is the difference between both of them? Phenotype is more or less of the visible characteristics of an organism. Visible characteristics. For example, if somebody has blue eyes, okay, blue eyes, they are very uncommon. So it becomes a major identifying factor for that person. That is a phenotypic factor. Whereas genotypes are structural component. Okay, structural component. And what would be the structural component? For example, this particular person has a genetic sequence like this. So genotype is about what kind of genotype do you carry? Okay, for example, in human beings, if I take this example of capital T as a trait stands for tall and small t for small, right? So if a particular person has this genotype and they are tall, that means what? This is the genotype, capital T, small t. Okay, this aggregation where they have received one allele from mother and one from father for the height gene. This is the genotype. Whereas the feature that they are tall, the feature that they look tall is phenotype. Okay, so this is the meaning of genotype and phenotype. Another term which is uh, generally a source of confusion for most of the people, it is called as allele. Now, what is an allele? Just now I was mentioning this term when I said that if as a person I have this genotype, capital T and small t, 
That means for the height factor, I have got capital T from one parent and small t for the, from the other parent. And there was equal probability of me getting a particular allele from either of the parents. It could have been either capital T or small t. So allele is nothing but one or more variations in the DNA sequence. Okay, one or more variations. Why am I using this term? Like I told you, for the character height, I could have either capital T or small t. It will become more clear. Now see, if I consider my mom and dad here, this is my father, this is my mother's genotypes, and they are arranged like this. So I will have equal probability of inheriting small t, capital T, small t, small t. So there is 25, 25, 25, 25 percent probability that which of the alleles am I going to get. And depending upon which allele I'm getting from my mother and which from my father, I tend to have a particular genotype put together for my bodily phenotype. Understood? That is the meaning of allele. Another two related terms here. One is homozygous and the other is heterozygous. So just now I was telling you about this height organization in terms of genotype terminology. So if both the alleles are same, either this format or this format, it is called as homozygous. But if both of them are different, it is called as hetero. So you can decipher from the term, hetero means different and homo means similar. Right? This is the term here. And when I talk about heterozygotes, what is this? This is the genotype. And phenotype will be something different. It will be obviously the tall person. Why, why do we say this? For this organization, capital T and small t, why always tallness as a factor is going to dominate? Because capital T is the dominant gene. Whereas small t is recessive. So if in a genotype, capital T and small t are existing together, then the dominant gene will always express it while suppressing the recessive gene. Fine? But in a homozygous recessive condition, if this is the condition, small t, small t, there is no capital T to dominate over small t because both of them are small t. Right? So therefore in this case, capital T itself will be expressed. Okay, so in terms of height, we were taking this as short. So understood, with respect to heterozygous and homozygous, it is more or less related to the arrangement of the genotypes. Right? So dominant gene is expressed in heterozygous condition. Okay, and in homozygous condition, it will either, here small t will express itself and here capital T will express itself. Fine? Okay, the next term is recombination. So I hope you all know what is recombination. You must have studied in science and tech also. There's a lot of news around recombination. If I take a plasmid or a bacterial DNA and I infuse it here with a foreign DNA sequence, this can be any desirable sequence which I want. So now what I have done, I have fused the genetic material of two different organisms for a output. If I talk about Bt cotton, it is a recombinant variety. What did we do in Bt cotton? We have inserted the terminating sequences, right? As well as this particular foreign bacterial DNA, because of which when the insects bite on the leaves of the particular plant. So what will happen? The gut will get infected and they will die. So therefore it is acting as a uh, naturally pesticide repellent kind of a plant. We have achieved that using recombinant DNA technology. And if you look, look at the term itself, you will understand. Recombine. Meaning you have taken two different DNA sequences and you have recombined them. Right? Fine. The next terminology, which we'll talk about here, 
is about Mendel's law of inheritance. So what laws did he give? So first was law of dominance. Second, law of segregation. First is dominance, second is segregation, and third is law of independent assortment. What do we mean by this? Law of dominance, I have already told you, that wherever you have a dominant trait, that will express itself over the recessive one. That is law of dominance. Now, what is law of segregation and law of independent assortment? Come to that idea. So just as I was giving you this example, that our mother and our fathers, everybody has two alleles for a particular character or a quality which we are assessing, eye color, height, anything. So when gamete formation is happening, these alleles get separated. This is called segregation. Where they were existing in pairs in our parents, but now during gamete formation, since the child has to be formed, the zygote has to be formed, one allele has to come from each of the parents. No, Otherwise, it will become a combination of four which does not work in human beings. It should be one allele from mother and one from father. To facilitate that, the cell division is happening in such a way that the alleles get separated, they get segregated. And this segregation is independent of each other. They are not related to each other, they are mutually exclusive events. That is the meaning of law of independent assortment. That this assortment has happened independently of each other. Right? And now you understand that there is a 25% chance of each one of them. Okay, ultimately you will have two alleles. It can either be this or this, this or this, this and this and this or this. These are the permutation combinations which, which exist. Okay, I hope you have understood some basics of genetics. Thank you.